So today we're gonna to be talking about the Protozoa Foundation and it truly is a one of a kind keyboard. It features multiple different tops, a great use of magnets and some funky finishes to boot. And to be honest, I fell in love with this keyboard pretty quickly. You can really, really tell how much love and passion went into this project. And I wanna show you guys my overall thoughts about this keyboard today. So the keyboard itself comes with a pretty standard bare case. There's nothing really inherently special about the inside. It does come with a cleaning cloth over here, but there's nothing too crazy. And it does have these dangly things, tassels? Are they, are they called tassels? We'll call them tassels. And I'm not really sure if that will change in the final rendition for packaging at all, but I really hope that these pieces don't change for packaging. These are absolutely gorgeous boxes and I know I'm a sucker for a really nice box, but these are really, really pretty. These are where the spare top pieces get stored with a magnetic flap. This is really pretty. You can hold two of them as well. All right, now let's take a look at some of the features of this keyboard and uh, there, there's a lot. So I'm gonna throw them up on the screen and you guys can pause the video and read through, but there are just way too many to narrate today. So the keyboard does start at 420 US dollars plus shipping. I didn't forget to add that for you guys this time. And it does have three variations, which honestly isn't a bad price for what you're getting in this keyboard. And I'll go into that later on in the video. And as a disclaimer, the Twitch stream was sponsored. However, this YouTube video is not. However, I'll always give you guys my honest thoughts and opinions. So let's talk about what you're getting with this keyboard. What are some of the key features? And one of the key features are these interchangeable top pieces, which I absolutely love. I think this is fantastic. You can get your keyboard to look different without having to disassemble anything. And it's just utilizing some magnets. And I know what a bunch of people are probably thinking right now. Does the keyboard make any rattling noises or does it move at all while you're typing or using the keyboard? Cause it is just magnets. It doesn't. They're strong enough that when you lay down the top frame, it doesn't move at all and doesn't create any sort of noise. It's a really nice feature to have. I really like this. And next up we have the cork bottom piece, which acts as the feet for the keyboard. Or is it foot in this case? I'm not too sure. And while I don't have any alternative materials to try for the bottom of this keyboard, I'm pretty positive cork has some effect on your sound signature for better or for worse. But one thing about cork is I do have some old cork coasters that I use for drinks and whatnot. And I know that once you get these a bit dirty, they become a little bit tough to clean. So again, this will be something that you can only really tell in the future. For now, it looks pretty clean on my keyboard. But another really nice touch about the keyboard is the custom hardware slash screws. They look good. And as a final note, there is some side RGB slash underglow with this keyboard featured on the left and right side of the board. It's not that bright and honestly, it's not that noteworthy. In fact, I would probably turn this off. And there is just a slight bit of LED bleed coming from that left macro column for the LED, but it's not that noticeable under normal lighting conditions. But let's get this keyboard disassembled, shall we? Now comes for the next interesting bit about this board. Once we get it opened up, you can see this bit of suede at the bottom, which we'll talk about here in a bit. First, we're gonna talk about the PCB and oh boy, is it beautiful. It features this pointillism style wave effect to it, which is gorgeous. And it's on the bottom too, so you can still appreciate it when you take apart the keyboard, which is awesome, I love it. And this is indeed a top mount keyboard, which I ended up really liking. And normally I'm kind of iffy on top mounts myself. I either can hate or love them. Another interesting note is how they handled the mounting point for the plate underneath the spacebar. Now, normally I do not like it when keyboards have a mounting point right directly underneath the spacebar as it makes it feel and sound a bit weird. But in this case here, what they did was they added a giant relief cut underneath. That way there it flexes freely, thus negating any of those oddities you'd find from a mounting point directly underneath the spacebar. And one thing that almost slipped by, but you guys pointed out on stream was how the USB-C is just ever so slightly visible from the top. Now, while you can't really see this under normal typing conditions, if you do happen to glance at the keyboard directly from on top, it is noticeable. You can see it, especially when light's shining directly on it. Under different lighting conditions, it's harder to see though. And as a final note about the USB-C connector, I promise it's the last one, you can see a bit of the exposed connector when you do plug it in. It's not a huge deal since you probably won't see this anyways, but if they were to recess this just back a little bit, you wouldn't see this part of the connector. Taking a deeper look into the inside of the keyboard, we have our piece of suede, which is supposed to break contact between the PCB and the weight. And then we have this beautiful, beautiful weight on the inside. It's made of stainless steel and I absolutely love it. And honestly, I wish this was an option for the bottom piece instead of the cork because this is such a cool design. And that's pretty much it for the internals of this keyboard. I'm gonna put this back together and give you guys a quick sound demo and then we'll have some closing thoughts about the board.
And there you go, that is a sound demo of the Protozoa Foundation. And honestly, while the sound signature right now in its current form isn't quite for me, I typically lean towards more of a, I hate saying it, clacky keyboard or something a little bit more high pitch and loud, the sound signature is quite nice. However, I do wish the spacebar had a bit more oomph to it. It feels a little bit flat or deadened right now sound wise. And for 420 US dollars for its base aluminum kit, I think this is an extremely fair price for how much you're getting with this keyboard. And if you guys missed it earlier on in the video, additional tops do have an additional cost. And some final thoughts about the keyboard itself. Honestly, it is such a labor of love and you can see that how much went into building this keyboard. It is a very fun and very easy building process too, which you guys know I highly value. The magnets work well on it. Everything just seems to fit together very, very well. And I really like that. Now that begs the question, who is this keyboard exactly for? And honestly, if you've been looking for an f rollless TKL with a macro column, I think this keyboard's for you. It's a pretty unique layout as well as a pretty unique design. But yeah, some final notes. I'm not 100% sold on the sound signature. I do wish this was a bit louder. I am gonna play around with different switches down the road. I absolutely love the aesthetic of the keyboard. I think it looks beautiful. I think there's a lot of cool features to this. I even think the cork bottom is a nice touch. And the layout is just different enough from everything else that I own in my collection that I wanna pick it up just to have this layout. You don't really come across f rollless TKLs that often. And this is just a really cool project from Protozoa. I really like the stuff they've been putting out and this might be my favorite one yet. And there is one last thing I want to convey to you guys before we finish the video today, which is to practice some financial responsibility within this hobby. But if there's anyone watching this video struggling between choosing to pay rent and also buy a luxury keyboard, please pay rent. I, I want you guys to have survive first then keyboard later. Does that even make sense? Regardless, just pick the more responsible things here. Luxury keywords are not responsible. And if you guys like this video today, please leave a thumbs up and a comment down below. If there's something you guys wanna see more of in the future, or maybe a tutorial you guys wanna know, definitely leave a comment in the comment section. And if you guys haven't already considered subscribing to the YouTube channel, that would definitely do me a solid. But until next time, see ya.